So thanks for tuning in. Uh, we got the topic today is going to be rendering inside a ZBrush for the purposes of getting out to Photoshop. So I want to show a workflow uh, that's very popular uh, for many, especially concept artists. Uh, instead of having to worry about maps, displacement, normal maps, and things like that, being able to just use ZBrush's renderer um, and in essence get render passes and send those over to Photoshop and use Photoshop as your compositor. So it's a very, very popular workflow. Uh, I see it a lot in the film industry for concepting. Yeah, it's starting to get in more in the game industry. And then just in general, I see people doing it in, uh, across all industries, whether it be um, a jeweler or a collectible or a toy manufacturer. It's a really quick way to get your uh, pieces across. So we are uh, simulcasting again this so hopefully our audio we've made some audio adjustments and uh that hopefully that is good for you so on your screen you guys should see my uh little gundam here um that i've been working on uh, and uh, what we're going to be doing again for those that are just joining us we're going to be looking at rendering within zbrush and sending that out in essence as render passes and then taking it into photoshop so i'm just i'm just waiting for um people to get settled in before we start really diving in on this. Hi, Blands. Welcome back to another show. Okay, so hi, Victor Ride. That's a good one. I like that name. Ve no, sorry, Vector Ride, not Victor. Vector Ride. I like that. Um, so when, I, when you're rendering in ZBrush, obviously, I'm just pulling this up because this is just an example of rendering with inside of ZBrush itself and the things that you can do. And I want to take this maybe to another level and get it out and get it into Photoshop and start using those elements. So this is my render that I've done inside of ZBrush to try and make something look a little more like a tune shade look. So there are many attributes here that we're going to be looking at and we're going to be following through here and the things you got to think and maintain about for rendering within the application is some major ideas or pillars so first off you're going to have well what material have you assigned to your sub tools so in this case every single sub tool has this material assigned to it which this is more of like a, I made this material look a little more like tune shaded okay so this is an important factor is what do we have for material assignment. The next thing you have is what kind of poly paint or color information do you have on the model? Because all that's going to play a role when we start playing with rendering here and getting it out into Photoshop. Okay, the next thing you're going to have is your lighting. Okay, so this becomes very important. What are you doing with lights? And there are two types of lighting. Uh, I'm going to touch base more on the traditional lighting that most people are maybe used to and then there's also light caps so i'll touch base on the both so you guys can see what the difference is why you might want to use a light cap over the regular lighting okay could come in very handy being able to play with those those and then the last thing that we're going to be thinking about and taking a look at is all of our render settings okay specifically in our render properties and figuring out what are we rendering with what are our shadows or ambient occlusion or anything else look like Okay, so let's get into this and start working through the idea here of looking at just um, materials in, in the sense. Okay, so I'm going to change my material selection here because again, right now, this is a custom material that I played with and we're just going to grab the basic material too here. And I'm going to turn off all poly paint and all material selection. So if I hold down the shift key and tap on the brush icon here within the subtool palette, what it's going to do is going to turn everything off. So all we are really looking at is this model now with just this material assigned to it. There's absolutely no color information being assigned. Okay, so let's first take a look at like a grayscale idea so we can really understand the lighting and how this works. And make sure when you say lighting, you do this apparently. Apparently this is now, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what this has to do. This is like ultra quotations. Forget this. This is like mega quotations. Lighting. Whatever. Okay, so 
again, there are two types of lighting with inside a ZBrush. So you have in the light palette, which again, I've just docked this to the right and to the left of my trays because I want to use these palettes often. Okay. So again, the dock, if you don't know how to dock, if you're new with us here, you just click on over any of the palettes and that's right. We're artists. We don't kill the menus. We kill them palettes. So you just click on this little icon right here and you can see you can grab and you can put it to this tray or that tray. And you can see that you'll get a white border as you're hovering over, right? And I would say, I want that light palette over there. So this is just making it easier for me. And when I am rendering, I usually open both trays on either side. And to do that again, there's this little double arrow with the bars on top and the bottom. This is what opens and closes the, the left and right tray. Okay. So rendering, I always have this. I always have rendering a material maybe in the left and my lighting and tool palette on the right because these are the four menus I'm going to use the most. Okay. <clears throat> if you want to unassign color um, to it, the the white in essence is no color. So if you have assigned some color to an object, so let's take, let's just look at just whatever piece here. Let's grab this mouthpiece, right? So right now, I'm not looking at any paint information. So if I grab a color and say, let's throw some green on this, I go color fill object, right? So now I have green. Technically no color is white. So if I say go to the white, I can say color fill object, and now there is no color assigned to it. So when the brush icon is on, right, there's no white assigned to it. And if I want to see it without any of assigned painting, then I turn it off and then this is just pretty much only showing the material, right? So, and then it'll show whatever color I'm playing with. It'll just give you what that would look like. Okay. So that's pretty much what you need to do if you want to assign on a sign. Okay. Yes, this model was 100% done in ZBrush. Um, so it was all done with uh, pretty much the topology brush for some of the pieces and mostly uh, Z modeler a little bit uh, for some pieces, but it was mostly done with like the topology brush and doing some other things. But yeah, it's a hundred percent Z brush. Okay. So <clears throat> moving on our lighting. So this light over here, as you can see, I click on the dot, we're going to adjust our lighting. Okay. Now what's important to understand is there's a relationship between the light and the materials. So only the materials here on the bottom, which is our standard materials. Okay. Will be affected by lighting. So I know on a popular material is madcap gray. A lot of people like this material and use this material. The downfall is now our lighting means nothing. Okay. There's nothing going to happen because on any matte cap material, Lighting is baked into the material. So the ZBrush lights will play no effect to how the mesh looks when it's for the material base. It'll play effect still on our shadows, our ambient occlusion, things like that, but it's not going to play any effect on what it's doing to the model. So we need to be, excuse me, in a standard material. So pretty much when I'm doing this, setting to Photoshop, and again, we're using ZBrush as our renderer and sending over. I'm going to stick with standard. That's pretty much what I'm going with. Okay. So I'm going to move on and go, all right, let's see what we have here. We have a light maybe, and we're going to put it right about there. Okay. So your intensity is just pretty much the strength, how intense that light is. So obviously you can make this light what we call pretty hot. What I mean by hot, it gets really, really bright. So if I start turning this, I'll turn it back up. So in this area, as you see, it's getting very washed out white. That's considered, it's too hot for me. So I'm just going to keep it at a default, default, <laughs> default 8.5, uh, 0.85. And then this is obviously your color. So you can add a color to the white, right? So maybe I want to have a little bit of a blue, a little warm tone in it, especially since it's metal. Right, give it a little bit of that cold feel to the touch. All right, then you have your ambient and your distance. 
The only time I would play with your distance is if you're dealing with stuff that's extremely flat, which maybe this might work. So as we start playing with our distance, you can see you'll start getting a little bit different look to him. So the easiest way for me to show this to you is on a cube. So let's grab a cube here and let's initialize this. And we'll make it all single sided everywhere. So all we have is this cube, right? And especially if we switch to say something more of a reflective material, you can see what we get here, right? We're getting like just solid colors because the, the object is perfectly flat and we're trying to reflect something. If you start playing with your distance, you can see now the image will start being seen more. Because now what we're doing is putting, in essence, a little bit of a bend to the light so that the material can actually be seen the on this cube. So the distance should really only be played with when you got something extremely flat is really the only time I would play with this distance slider. Which in our case, we're dealing with a Gundam, right? So it might, it might have some benefit here to start playing with this distance slider. Okay? So that's that's up to we're the artists. It's up to us what we want. Right? So <clears throat> I'm just going to put it back to 100% so we're just dealing with defaults, okay? And we're going to go back to not the bump viewer, but the basic 2 material. So this is one type of lighting, right? And as you can see as we move the light, right? It's moving it in within the scene and everything's updating because we have a standard material. Now, other type of lighting is our light cap. And you might want to use this lighting instead because there are many more advantages to this lighting over using the standard light. Because you got to remember as these first standard lights were built in the very beginning of ZBrush. So these are the lights that also work with 2.5D technology, right? And then as we went along here, we started making obviously additional features, and we wanted to update the lighting system. So there is a secondary lighting system. So our light caps gives us the capability, if I create a new light, okay, you're going to again have the same thing that you have up here, where I can move a light around, right? And you can see that's updating. No matter where I go, I get an update to the light. Now, because there's this lighting system and this lighting system, because they're both turned on, both those lights are using uh, the lighting inside a ZBrush, okay? So if I wanna not use this standard lighting, you need to either turn this light off, okay? So you just click on this and see it's off. So now the only light in the scene is this light that we're playing with in the light caps, okay? Now, if you turn off the standard lights and you go to your material palette, it's gonna look like this. Okay, so you can see all the matte caps have disappeared and you have no idea what is what. So if you don't want to have that and you're going to want to use matte caps, you can keep this on and then just drop this intensity way, way down to pretty much it's off, right? So now it's 0001, it's pretty much off. And then your materials will be here, the matte caps. So if you guys have ever ran into this, I'm only bringing this up because we had support tickets. Hey, what happened to all my matte cap materials? That's why um, that would happen, okay? So just to give you an idea. So our light caps, what's really nice about this and why I like the light cap system is number one, I don't have any kind of limitation like I do up here. So we can only make eight lights total up here. I can make many more lights in a light cap system, okay? I can get up to 32, 50, 40, whatever number I would want, okay? We have a strength slider, which is in essence pretty much like the intensity up here. So we're strengthening up our model a little bit, right? Saying I can say 0.8, and now it's pretty an intense, right? Light. But what's awesome about this is we have some other controls, and two big ones is this aperture and this fall off. Okay? And I would say, yes, Red Hots, this has better capability for you than the standard lightings, just because of these next two, even these next two sliders alone. So what I can do is I can change my aperture, which in essence is changing the size of my light, changing that aperture. And if you've ever done any photography with like a an SLR, that's what this is gonna, we're just changing that whole aperture, right? So I can have that, which I don't have that in the upper lighting. 
then I can even control my fall off. So I want, do I want this light to be more of a harsh light uh, edging or kind of have a slow roll off so it only gets really bright or hot in the middle, right? So you have these added controls. Just this alone can really, you can start creating a really nice roll off to the lighting. You have, can, of course, play in with, you know, some lighting color. But besides that, you also have a blend mode. How do you want that color or this light to work with the blend? Okay, and the whole light in general. So I can blend my light, okay, in different ways. Okay, so you also have a shadow control. So you can tell if this light doesn't have shadows or want to have shadows. You do have that control with the normal light. So if you open the light properties, you can see there's a shadow right here. Okay, so you also have the capability of an opacity control. And this becomes important because in light caps, there's actually, think about, there's a diffuse channel and then there's a specular channel. So your specs are what's happening specularity wise um, and reflectivity wise on the scene. Okay. So this is giving me the capability to do certain things. So for an example, let's make another, a new light. Okay. Let's make this light have a little bit of color so we can see what's happening. So we'll throw a little red in there. Right, so this is my second light in here, and now what's great is I can turn this into a gobo light. So a gobo light's an old film thing. With back in the day, they would have the lights on set, and they would create a metal cutout maybe and put it in front of the light. So if you want it, you'll see it maybe being used still to this day in a lot of different places. You see it a lot when people shine their logos onto something. Or if you've ever been to IKEA, now they're using like lit arrows of where to walk. That's pretty much a gobo light for the most part in essence. So what I can do here is in this alpha texture, I can say alpha and let's say I want to make the light actually squared. Okay. And now you can see in here, the light is squared. Here I'm going to drop my aperture. So it becomes a smaller squared light. And you can see what we have here now. This you cannot do with these standard lights. So obviously there's a lot more control here. Not only that, but we can tile it. So I'm going to say three by four maybe or three. And now I have this tiling that's kind of, we're imitating maybe in a showroom or like in a convention center. So this is very popular for people that do hard surface or people do automotive or anything with transportation because the reflective lines is really important to an artist like that. So this is another benefit to us, right? So I could keep up in this strength, right? So what we're doing is sh making the diffuse get this red light, okay? And we're also making our specularity, right, have this capability. So if I start pushing it to the side, it's now pushing this more to the side, bring it in, and you can see the difference. So where our opacity slider comes into play is saying, okay, this particular light, I want to use it more in just the spec. I don't want it to be in the diffuse channel. So this opacity, I can tell it, I actually want to turn it off. So now it's only showing in the spec capability. So now I can say, oh, let's make that specularity be a lot bigger. And then this is what I have going on. So we're getting this red tiled square light only in the spec channel but not in the diffuse channel. But I can say, yeah, let's put a little bit in the diffuse, right? So I can play with this and set, you know, I'm gonna say 0.3 and now I have that, you know, and now we can maybe go to a color that's more understandable maybe for what I want, make a little bit more of a cooler light. So see, I'm getting these nice reflective pieces now in that mouth area, okay? So I got my diffuse channels, got some opacity in this light and 100% I want that happening in specularity. So this is really becoming something that I can start playing with a lot. I can even change the width, right, of these. So I have vertical and horizontal width changing of this object. So it's any alpha that you want to bring in. Okay, so I can grab anything. I can grab this if I want. And now this is being tiled, right? So here we'll untile it so you all can 
see what we're making here. So you can see in this area and in the spec, right? It's all being controlled by this alpha. Okay. And then next to that, <coughs> excuse me, you can add a texture. So I can say put this texture also within this light. So now we've got a light. Okay. We'll go a little bit smaller here. We'll crank it up so you can see it a little bit better, right? You can see we've got a texture now that's also being clipped by the alpha. So if we were to switch to some kind of alpha, let's say something even like this, right? You can see the whole texture is not coming through. Or if we even went to, let's say, a star, right? You've got this capability now, right? And then we can play with our fall off and make that more of a stronger, harsher light, right? And then now you have that capability here. So this becomes in very handy. So I can blur it if I want as well. So this is blurring the texture. Okay. So I can click and then select another texture. And that's coming in. See, it's blurred now. Going back to that. See, it's very blurred because I got it cranked up. So maybe I only want a blurring of two. So the icon and everything don't update on the fly. So you just click and click it again. And then you'll see the update of the icon to correct. And then your orientation is just a rotation. So I can move this all around. So a person just asked, I think it was Red Hots. Oh, no. Uh, Marion Mango asked about HDRIs. Absolutely. That's the benefit of this system as well. Light caps will work with HDRIs. So in the background menu here, we can select an image that has a panorama. So I can say texture. And then here, here's an image that I want to have inside of my scene. So this is going to drop that image in the background for me to use if I want for any type of lighting or anything else like that. So let's pull away here. Okay. And let's even, let's import another image into here. So we're going to go to our program files. Let me get to that portion here. Do, do, do. So um, in ZBrush, we have shipped in the program files. Okay. So I'm just in Pixelogic 4R7. Um, in Z textures. Okay. There's panoramas here. Okay, and then you can see there are other panoramas in here that you can load and bring into the scene. Okay, if you want. So, <clears throat> we're going to be able to mess with this and play with this quite a bit to have this. And we're also being able to use this as a way to play with the, oops, sorry, the lighting within our light caps. I'm going to even be able to send this. So that's what this little button right here, I can say light caps. And then this is now giving the environment scene to there. So I might have some other settings here too. Let me make sure my adjustments is good here. Yep. And let me make sure my material I can even start to reflect the environment itself on the material inside the model. So you can see that environment is being reflected. You have a light cap exposure, so we can expose the light caps more and more if we want to, or less, whatever, whatever we want to do to be able to expose this. Okay. You have horizon lines that we can put in in light caps as well. Okay, so you can play with the line horizon and have a different color of a horizon line. Play with the latitude and longitude here if you want. So put a fake horizon line. So all these options start coming to play for you. And you start are able to do a lot more with your scene. So <clears throat> let me uh, reset. I'm trying to see... We should be able to see our background, so I'm going to reset our scene here. We're a little new project. 
And let's just look at just a sphere shape for this and get an understanding here of what we're doing. So you can see this is dropping into place, right? And then now we have this anywhere that I want, okay? So we can rotate, as we rotate, we're rotating around the whole image, okay? And I can, if I want, just play with the longitude and latitude of just the image. I can play with the tilt. Well, now we're gonna get sick, all right? But if I want, I can rot turn rotate off with object, right? So what that does is when I'm now rotating the object, right, and moving the object, the image stays perfectly still, right? And then now I can use, say, like a floor grid to kind of help line up, render this out, and make it look like this is sitting in this scene. So, of course, I can turn it off, though, and turn it on. And again, we can switch to importing and say, here we go. This is my house, you know, very nice, wonderful. There's my pool right there. Yes, swimming laps in my pool. There you have it. Not really. I, this is not my house. <laughs> so <clears throat> oh, we can import anything we want as an HDRI. So now if I want to use this, right, as my lighting, okay, I hit this light caps button. And what ZBrush is doing is taking that light information and applying it to our light caps. So we have a diffuse and spec based upon this HDRI image. And again, if I have a standard material selected from down here in the modifiers, I'm going to be able to do environment reflection. And this is why I want to also switch to a sphere so you guys can see this a lot better. You have the capability and we'll divide up. Okay, to actually reflect the environment right in this. So this helps obviously with some hard surfacing and things that you want to do here. Okay, in our render properties, okay, you see this detail slider? This is affecting how it's seen inside that sphere. So you can see, oh, I haven't changed anything polygon count wise, but you can see the image is in as good quality. It's kind of, Okay, it's kind of a pixelated, if you will. So this detail slider, which default is three, that's in essence saying the quality. So if I go all the way up to four, you'll even get a little bit better quality of reflection within this sphere. But then that ups your render time, right? And it up all your quality. And don't forget all your render times, there's multiple factors in here. The number of lights we're adding, okay? the what we're doing with materials, what we're going to start doing here with shadows and things like that. All right, so let's let's start diving into that stuff. So let's turn off this, okay, and let's look at just rendering out this sphere with only shadows. So along the top here, you're going to see shadows taking place in here, and then now you can see the shadows that we have. So you're getting multiple shadows because if you look, we've got eight lights within our light caps, okay? So here's the benefit of light caps again. So when we created these lights from the light caps, we actually know, hey, there should be bounce light information, right? So if you look, these bottom four lights here are not casting any shadows. So when you click on them, there are no shadows being casted. The only lights that are casting shadows, excuse me, are these top four lights. So I can say there's that blue one. Hey, I don't want that to cast any shadow. And so now that's at zero. I'm gonna say, you know what, this light also. So from this direction of light, no shadows casting. I only want these two lights. So now we can render this out and see what this looks like for our shadows. Okay, and then now you can see there's just really two types of shadows. It still feels like there are a lot of shadows, okay? So let's do this. Let's just delete all of our lights out of here. And let's go back to our basic lights and let's discuss a little bit about what we can do with shadows, ambient inclusion, and so forth, okay? So I'm just deleting all the lights that we have here and we're just gonna use the standard light, okay? So now that's all I have here is my standard light. So when I render this out, this light right here is what's giving us our shadows now, 
right? So I can move this out here maybe and say render. So looking at our shadows, number one, you can see they're being clipped. Number two, you can kind of see why is there multiple shadows when there's only one light. And there are settings here helping us control this, okay? So what I want to do, number one, is solve the clipping. So what's doing that is because we have our floor grid on, that actually can cast shadows, right? But the floor grid is not big enough compared to where we have the light sitting in space, okay? So I'm going to go into our draw. And right here, I'm just going to say our grid size. Let's just make this right well, here. We'll just make it 10. That should be more than big enough. So you can see my grid now is a lot bigger. So let's recast this. And then there you go. So now we're getting the shadow. So what becomes an important element to us is what are we trying to do? So when we started this, I had loaded my Gundam where it's more of the tune shading. So if I'm casting a shadows, I probably want my shadows to be that tune look, which would probably be kind of harsh shadows. So I have to know how to do this. So even with one light, you can see all the multiple shadows being cast. What's controlling that is our BPR shadows, okay? So you have these two sliders on the top, which is our F strength, and the one next to it is our G strength. G, 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 G strength! I just had to do it. So anyways, so our F strength is for our fourth floor strength. So if I say 0.5, that's pretty much 50%. Now, what's great about ZBrush, because I haven't had changed any of the lighting information, I haven't changed any shadow parameters in the fact that how many shadows are casting your angles. I'm only sh changing the capability of how dark the shadows on the floor. So when I re-render, the render is very fast. Because what we do, as long as the object's not moving and I'm not changing a major shadow setting or major lighting setting, we always store the shadows and ambient occlusion in memory. So we just reuse those shadows. So because I'm only playing with the strength, I'm going to say, well, uh, maybe I want a little bit more strength. What does 0.7 look like? Yeah, that's better. I like that. I want to have a nice dark shadow, right? I can sit here and play with this and then just render things out and see what I get. There we go. That's like, that's 0.6. So in essence, that's 60%. So then obviously in the G strength, G, -G, -G strength, we can do the same thing. And I'm going to stop this my last time doing G-Strength that way. I can render this out, and that's changing the opacity. And when, when we load, we're going to load a character here. Okay, I'm just trying to keep this basic simple so we can understand this. So the next thing we're going to look at is our rays and our angles. And this is really important. So think about it. We've got a light sitting in our scene. Okay? And take my head as the sphere. All right? We've got a light sitting here in front of me here. Okay, and I want to say this light is allowed to have so many rays being cast from it. Okay, so that's what these rays slider is. So I can say actually what I want is 30 rays. So this one light has 30 rays casting from it. So I'm going to render that out. And again, you can hit Shift R or hit that BPR button in the top right. And you can see my shadows got a little bit more soft. Okay, they're not as harsh anymore. So if I keep bumping up these rays, and let's double it again. Let's go to 60. Let's re-render that out. Keep keep an eye in this area right here, what's going to happen to our shadows. Okay, just keep, keep a steady watch. So you can see they keep softening a little bit. All right? So this slider is in relationship to our angle. Okay? So if I start knocking down this angle. Let's put it at something very extreme, like just a three. Watch what happens to our shadows now. So we're going to render this out. Again, we're going to hit BPR, Shift R, whichever one you want. Okay. And we're going to, boom. Now you can see we're getting a very sharp shadow. But one thing I want you to notice, take a look at the edge right here where my cursor is. I'm going to make my draw size a lot smaller here. What up here? Okay. You can see right here right in here specifically it's very there's a little bit of a blurring happening there what's doing that is the rays so we still have 60 rays but only an angle of three so if i knock this ray back down to let's say one and i render out watch how sharp the shadow is going to get right so we're getting a lot sharper of a shadow and you can see that it almost looks like there's three steps in there so if we literally put this to one and zero and then hit render you're going to get a crisp 
shadow, right? That pretty much looks like old Looney Tunes, Hanna-Barbera cutout in there, right? So to put this in another term, here, let's open up Photoshop. Okay, let's make a new document here. All right, and let's think about this really quickly to the point of, Okay, we've got some here. Let's actually draw a sphere shape here. Uh, so let's put, we've got a, right now we've got a sphere in our world. Okay. And let's, uh, let's make that sphere. All right. So uh, let's change the color. Let's make a green sphere. Okay. Go back to my brush. So think about this. Okay, we have in our scene, I'm going to make this a lot smaller. And let's grab a color here so we can see. So we have a, a light in our scene here. Okay, that's sitting up here in the corner. Okay, so think about here. Let's just, whatever. Yay, it's a light. Yay. It's got a cord. Ooh. Okay. So there's a light in our scene here, okay? There are rays being cast to make our shadow. So think about one ray is just one casted ray doing this, right? The minute I start upping the number of rays, I start having more of this, these rays casting to the sphere. Right? And what our angle does is it restricts how much of that. So let me switch to a different color here. Let's switch to an orange. So our angle, is, in essence, is an angle of degrees. So how much of degree opening do I want? So right now in ZBrush, we have a 3% opening. So if we turn this off, okay, and I say there is an angle but it's only 3%, let's just say. And then now my rays, even if I have 60 of them, they have to stay within this that orange parameter, okay? So if I go back and say, you know what, you get a bigger, in essence, per number or angle. So now maybe our angle is this big, right? Switching back to now the blue casting rays, you can see I have a bigger angle. And if the more rays I have casting on this, you're going to get, obviously, different shadows. Okay, so going back to ZBrush, these two sliders are probably the most important sliders to get a realistic, better quality. So if I'm going, I want to have maybe a harsh shadow, okay? But I want it to be kind of blurry along the edging. I might go high rays and a low angle, right? So high rays, low angle is going to give me kind of a crisp shadow, but it's going to give me blurring along the edging, right? So there you go. So see, I got a nice blurring, but it's a really more, you know, from a distance, you're looking at this, it's a crisp shadow. We're in a scene where we clearly, our eye and our mind goes, hey, there's like one light that's really bright in this world right now casting your shadows. If I go, you know what, I need softer shadows, this is where I start maybe open up that angle to be maybe 45 degrees. And then now I'm going to get a way more softer shadow, right? And I have so many more rays casting. So you can see we start breaking that up. And I can say higher angle and lower rays, okay, is going to now give us a very, like, weird shadowy, like you can see now, when we look at this, our mind goes, hey, there are multiple lights in here casting shadows, and each of those lights seem to be pretty bright, and this gives more of a feel like they're kind of higher up. They're not so close to the sphere, and it's just the shadows. So you can see just playing, just with these two settings alone, you can completely change the feel of what we're looking at, okay? So I might go, I want some pretty soft shadows, so I'm going to say 100. And I want it to be somewhat a little bit tighter. So I'm going to say 100 rays in an angle of 30 degrees. So we're going to get a very more blurry shadow. It's not going to be very harsh. It's going to have probably some 
parts of so that harsh at a certain point, but it's kind of softening out a lot as it goes off, right? Then I can say, mm, let's try now, now playing with how strong do I want the shadows to be? Okay, so this is again on the character. I'm gonna say 0 0.7 is good. Maybe the floor, let's go to 0.5, 50% strength on the, on the floor here. Right, so great, okay, we starting to have a shadow capability. Now, the resolution slider below, that's the quality of shadow. So the higher your resolution, the better quality you're gonna get, and this is in pixels. So the same thing to do if you wanna play with this, looking at your document, you can see my width and height. The safest thing to be, if you want to have really nice, good quality shadows, double the resolution size minimum to the biggest size of the document. So you can see my size of my document is 1868, right? So I would want to have something around 3900, right, within the resolution of shadows, which is pretty much what I'm sitting at right now, 4096. So if I start dropping this way down, and like say putting this at 512, Right, the re the quality of my shadow is definitely going to change, and you can see because I change the setting, it's re-rendering the shadow. So anytime I play with resolution, angle, or rays, it's going to change the quality of your shadow. So this is what your resolution does, and it's doing it in pixels. So the slider next to it, the blur, is blurring after render. So we'll render it, and then we'll add a little blur to just the shadows. Okay, so cranking that blur slider up makes your render time a lot longer, okay? But your rays and your angles, okay, is really what helps you depict. So let's let's load something that's a character here. So let me grab something new here. Let's just grab something that ships with ZBrush. So anybody that watches this again, uh, wants to rewatch it, you guys can play with this capability here. Uh, hold on. Let me load Mr. Earthquake. Okay, so here we go. We got Earthquake. Okay, and then of course, we are still reflecting this environment. So I'm going to turn this off. Okay, and I'm going to tell also in the modifiers, right? I can select what material by doing this. So I can click and draw over and I can find what material, okay, that I have in here and what I wanted to play with, okay? And I have the capability to do whatever it is I want to the material. So this is a way you guys can actually select with material. Okay, so we want to have just this light, okay, in the scene and nothing else, right? So now when I render out, okay, we're only still rendering our shadows. So obviously we need ambient inclusion now. So we need the darkest dark, especially where his foot's on the ground, to be depicted within the render. This, of course, is going to manipulate render time. And then what I mean by manipulate, it's going to give a longer render time as we keep adding these things and playing with these. So we've got the shadows here that I've been playing with. What we have, I'm going to say, that's pretty good. That's nice. I like that. So our ambient inclusion does not become available until we do this. Okay, which is, this is your ambient occlusion. So we're in render properties in the render palette. We have shadows and ambient occlusion. So if I re-render this now, you're going to see along the top here, it's going to say shadows, AO, shadows, AO, shadows, AO. Okay, so this is now rendering out shadows and ambient occlusion. Our render time is obviously going to go up, right? You can see once I've turned on this ambient occlusion button now, all our AO settings become available. Notice they're the exact same sliders in the shadows. So if you've been with me to this point, everything that you've uh, learned so far about the shadows, that can be applied now to the ambient inclusion sliders. So we did that on purpose. Once you understand the strengths, the, the actual resolution, the rays and the angles, those are the most important things to understand. The V depth and length depth, these are changing things so the shadows it's in the depth of the document, and the L depth is light depth. So think about the light sitting here. All we can do is move it around in space like this when we're sitting over in the light palette, okay? I need to be able to move the light like this, like it's coming closer or further away to the character. 
So that's what the actual L depth will do. The L depth is in essence moving the light's depth. The V depth is moving the shadows based upon pixels document. Okay, it's more of a pixel shift thing happening. So you have that same setting in here as well. Okay, notice that your quality here is pretty low. The angle set for 360 degrees, because if I'm doing a true ambient occlusion, I want ZBrush to look at all 360 degrees. So let's take a look at what our ambient occlusion is looking like. So to do this, and I would recommend doing stuff like this, when you start playing with your shadows, you start playing with the ambient occlusion, I'd recommend doing them in kind of like a render pass. So the only thing you're looking at is your ambient occlusion. The only thing you're looking at are your shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this skin shade material that we have, and I'm going to turn up the ambient all the way. Okay, I'm going to turn down my diffuse. Okay, and I'm going to turn off the specularity. So this is pretty much all we have. We have a flat shaded looking model. Okay, I have only ambient occlusion on. Let's render that out. Then you can see along the top here, all we have is AO. AO! Ambient occlusion! Right? So we'll let that finish up and we can see what we get. All right? And we're rendering. And then there you go. So there's our ambient occlusion. So this is what I'm getting for an ambient occlusion pass. This is going to start leaning into now, you know, I'm, we're going to be going into Photoshop here. So I want to maybe, let's try upping my resolution alone. Let's put it at where we have our shadow quality at. And let's go ahead and render that out now and see what we get for an ambient occlusion now. So you can see with the resolution lower for name and inclusion, it's kind of got a, a little bit of a grayness to it. And that might not be what I'm looking for. I'm looking for more of like uh, some pure whites to go in some pure blacks, have a better transition. So you can see here, you're getting a little better quality ambient inclusion, right? So even though our material is pretty much washed out with ambient, we're still getting a render. You can still see the character because it's all the AO. And now we're getting some very nice AO in the portions where we should, right? Because we should be getting those really dark, dark, dark spots where light can't get to. And that's what we want to have. So I'm kind of happy with this, right? So maybe the next thing I want to start playing, maybe instead of 360 degrees, let's try 180 degrees of angle, okay? So I'm glad the question just came up about how do you do the render passes. We're going to get into that because we're going to be starting now taking all these things we're talking about and combining them to do render passes to get out to Photoshop. So you can see just changing the angle alone, what that's doing, right? So this plays a significant role in understanding, you know, if I'm going down with less rays, okay, and keeping my angle at 360 degrees, I have an understanding that I have a 360 degree, but there's now only five rays. So you're going to get a little bit better, different quality of ambient inclusion to your model. Okay, so let's put it back. I kind of liked at 20, so we're going to keep it there. Okay, and let's turn on everything again in your painting information and everything we want. Let's select a different material. Okay, so we've got basic material two. Okay, this guy in particular has the skin shade assigned to him, right? So if I, again, click and do this, you can see that's the material. So if you want to, you could bring this material back into light, okay? And now get a specularity, add a little more diffuse. Okay, this material is nice, but there's not a really good shading quality to it. So it might be better to grab, say, one of the basic materials to have a stronger shading material to it, right? And what I can do is assign, I want to say all these subtools get this new material. So I'm going to go to Plugin, I'm going to Subtool Master, and I'm going to say Fill. And I'm, I'm going to say Color Material or Color Material. I'm just going to say Material and then say OK. And then now this is getting assigned this filled material. Okay, so I can say, ah, uh, all right, that's getting kind of a dark material, right? So this is where 
you can start playing with your diffuse to get what you want. So there's just more shading value here, right, to your scene. So this is the benefit of switching to a different material. And I can up the ambient maybe a little bit more instead of using just the skin shade. Okay, so a lot of times I'll switch back and forth and start playing with these. So let's just say this is, I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so we're going to start going, we need render passes out of ZBrush because we need to get these into Photoshop. Okay, so I'm going to open up BPR render passes. And you can see we've been doing shadows. So there's an ambient, there's a depth, okay, there's a shaded version, there's a mask, there's a floor, SSS, shadows, and so forth and so on. Okay. So just like the question came, I'm trying to create a scene maybe, and I might want to play with different camera angles. Maybe I want to play with an angle like this. So there are many, many, many ways to store an angle, especially if you accidentally rotate or something like that. So the one I like to use is in the movie palette. So I'm going to go to movie, timeline, and I'm going to hit show. This is opens up this, timeline. The reason why I like this is, is I've got hundreds of saved camera angles now. I can click this and say, okay, that's one angle. Maybe I need one like this. And it doesn't matter where I click. I don't really care where I click. And then maybe I'm going to do like a close-up to his head. Not, not an extreme close-up. And then click, and it doesn't matter. And I can cycle now through these different angles. So even if I accidentally do this, whoa! I can use, I'm using the right and left arrow keys to cycle through the render that I'm playing with, right? So this is definitely one way to do it. And I'm gonna say, uh, I wanna have something more maybe, let's get a little bit more from above because I wanna make sure I see the shadows on the floor and we'll store that one now. So now I've got four different, in essence, camera angles for my rendering. So this is one way to do it. You guys could also use your document your Z app link, and you can store custom here, right? Custom one, custom two, and you got your front back. But see, you're only now you're only got eight. That's all you can store is eight. So this is another way that people do it. But I prefer using the timeline because I can go through it, and I like being able to quickly cycle through these. Okay, so let's say this is what I'm liking. All right, so let's just look first at my shadows only. So let's render this out. Okay, let's just see what kind of shadows I'm getting here that I have. We are, and remember, you're up here on the top. You can see the shadows are happening. We're doing a BPR, which stands for Best Preview Render. And now we're looking at getting different passes out of ZBrush. Right now, we're only using one light. Okay, I like these shadows. They're looking really good. It's really nice shadows. Okay, so I've got... I like the softness on the floor that I'm having here. These shadows are good here on the body. Okay, so it's 70% intensity on the body and then 50% on the floor. It's nice, they're looking good. So now I have a shadow pass, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start sa saving out these passes, okay? So let's just click on shadows and I'm going to, on my desktop, I'm just gonna create a new folder and we'll call this um, dude, okay? And here, we'll bring this over so you guys can see, all right? And save it, and then there we have it. And now I'm gonna say, uh, I might want the depth pass, save that. I'm gonna want the mask capability, let's save that, okay? I need an ambient inclusion, I need an SSS, I can save my floor out if I want. Okay, I have a shaded. So we're gonna start using this, but let's first, let's get an ambient occlusion and let's get an SSS. So I don't need shadows anymore. So to save myself some rendering time, I'm turning off shadows and turning on only ambient occlusion. Okay, so I'm rendering this out and because I have the stored item in my timeline, I know I'm getting the exact same view, same position, everything that we have here. Yes, this is definitely going to be available to stream at a later date for those that are asking. All, all these are being recorded and automatically put on our Twitch channel um, and then also uploaded to our Pixelogic YouTube. Okay, so here we go. We got that. 
Here's my aim and inclusion. Looks good. I'm proud of it. Click on it. Save. All right. Let's get an SSS. Okay. So there are multiple things we need to do here for an SSS. So I'm going to turn off my aim and inclusion because I don't need that rendering anymore. And I'm going to turn on SSS. So we have now have a subsurface scattering capability. Right. So over here, you're now going to have a BPR SSS capability. You can see there's quality settings here again. Oh, uh, look, raise, angle, resolution, blur, V depth, L depth. Same thing that you guys were used to now playing in the shadows and aim and inclusion. So the concept's still staying the same. So we have consistency going across here. Okay. So what I can do is say, all right, what happens if I render? So let's say render and watching the top. Okay. Nothing happens. Then I have no SSS. The reason being is we need something else besides just turning it on in render. We need a light that will make an SSS. Okay. So you can see in the lineup properties, this is casting shadows. It can also cast an SSS, right? So we can either turn this light on or we can make a new light and then we can tell ZBrush to render that out, right? And then now it's trying to create an SSS. Okay. So I'm going to say, you know what? I don't want this light to be my SSS. I'm going to make a new light. So I'm going to click on this. All right, this light here. Okay, so you click once to select and you click again to create. And what I want to do is create a rim light. Okay, kind of a light coming from behind because that'll help push that SSS capability. So I'm going to say, all right, let's take this light. All right, and if I want to, just so visually you guys can see a little bit of difference here, we'll, we'll put a little bit of a blue in the light. So now we've got that warm look. Let's up the intensity. So it's a very, very hot light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this dot right here, and that makes it a rim light, right? So you can see as I move to the edges, it's moving the light based upon the rim. Right, so you can see what we can get here. Right, and I'm going to tell this light to be my SSS light. Okay, so I'm going to start rendering this out, and you can see it's saying SSS, SSS, SSS. So now it's actually rendering an SSS pass because now I've got a light that is being acting as an SSS. I've got SSS turned on in the actual render palette. So you got to have these two items. You got to have a light that's working like an SSS and you got to have it turn on. So now there is my SSS pass, which stands for subsurface scattering. If those that don't know can do that. Okay. And pixel, pixel puke, you're asking about batch rendering. Yeah. Just wait. I'm going to show you guys how to do batch rendering. Yes, there is a way. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this, in this webinar or we're going to click that and say, yes, perfect. SSS, beautiful. Okay, let's turn this light off, right? And let's go back to this light, which I've had in the scene, rendering everything out. I'm going to turn off now my SSS and just do a straight render. We're going to get a very fast render now. This is, in essence, a render now of nothing but the shaded character with the light. So in this shaded scene now, Okay, all there is, is shaded. In essence, the diffuse with the lighting. There's no shadows, there's no aim and inclusion, no nothing. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to call this key light. So I'm just going to use the main lighting that exists in the world today, which is the three key light system. So you have the key light is, in essence, your main, main light. There should be a side light kind of helping playing with that, and then a rim light, minimum, minimum. Those are the number of lights that we want to have. So let's at least get those. So I'm going to use the exact same light. Here's the beauty, okay? I'm using only one light, and I'm going to use this one light to render out multiple passes in different lighting. So let's make this be more of a side light now, maybe coming from, let's say, since the shadows are casting over here, let's put this light over here. And notice I'm not changing the color of my light. I'm not worried about any of that. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Okay. So let's just say, let's get pretty extreme here. Render it out. And I'm rendering out. 
and this is important because at render time, ZBrush is using this SPIX, which is a quality setting. So this is the quality of lighting that you're getting, okay? Number one. And number two, at render time, when we're done, we add a nice little anti-alias to the, to the model. So this is why I'm actually rendering and I'm not just doing a document export, okay? Uh, Luth is E. We already we went into light caps at the beginning of this stream. So if you were joining us late, uh, we went into light caps at the beginning. Um, so now I'm going to say shaded, perfect. I'm going to call this my side light. Beautiful. Okay. Let's turn this into now a rim light. Okay. So again, you're just clicking on this dot, and I'm saying, all right, let's put a rim light here. Let's see what that looks like. And the beauty is I'm looking at only what's happening with this one light. So I'm looking at this a light by light basis. So I'm rendering that out. Again, everything's turned off. So as far as shadows, aim and inclusion, I said there's none of that on because I'm rendering quicker now and I can call this, let's call this rim one. Okay, and I'm gonna say rim one because maybe I wanna maybe make another type of rim light coming from over here. And let's even go further. Yeah, maybe something like that. Let's render that out. Okay, so this is now rim two, or I can call this, if I want to, top rim. Okay, whatever I want to do for that. Maybe I want to throw another, maybe I want to put like a bounce light in here. So let's, let's make this back to being a non-rim. So let's put a little bit of a, a bounce light maybe down here towards the bottom. Okay. Now he's super scary. Totally makes me think of The Godfather lighting, which is a great film to go watch lighting with. Okay. Click on that. And I'm going to say uh, bounce light. Okay. Let's say, let's add another maybe soft, uh, another side light now coming from the other angle. Right. So our first one, we came from here. So let's now go from the other side and have it be up a little bit. Okay. Let's render that out. Perfect, beautiful, shaded. Okay, so we're gonna call this side light two. Call that number dose. Okay, so what we have now is we've got, let's recap here so far what we have. Okay, so you can, I'm looking at a question. Can you practice being used as a render to texture from? Um, are you, so the question is, can this practice be used as a render to texture from a meshed UV? So are you talking about bringing in a texture for, can you elaborate a little bit more for me? Are you talking about having a texture on a model and then using that? Because of course you can do that. You can even apply the texture as poly paint. So it doesn't matter if it's poly paint, it doesn't matter if it's a texture on the model. That absolutely, all this works that we're covering for that. If that's your question to just make sure. Okay. So now. <clears throat> Recap, we've got a depth pass, we've got shadows, we've got an aim and occlusion, we've got an SSS, and we got a mask. We did and did several passes, and remember, we just all we did is used one light, and we're just moving it. So we got a key light, we got two sides, we've got two rims, and I made a, I made a bounce light. And there's nothing saying we're gonna have to, have to use all these lights. There, I'm just, might as well render as much as I want. Okay, so now what I wanna also have is kind of like when we were talking about light caps with reflectivity, okay? How the light caps have two passes. There's a diffuse and then there's a spec, okay? So you can just choose between these in the area. We're kind of replicating that, okay? So what I want to do is actually say, hey, you know what? <clears throat> Let's play with this a little bit. And... Let's do this same thing, but for the purpose of, of filtering and going to Photoshop, okay? So I'm gonna switch my material. I'm gonna switch to say reflective map, okay? So nothing happens. And what I'm gonna do is hold the shift key and I'm gonna click on that icon, that brush again. And if you remember, that's really important, all right? So I'm going to say, this is a reflective pass. Okay, so let's render this out now. And we're getting the quality that we have. And I'm going to click on this pass. And I'm going to say reflect. 
let's just call this reflect one. Okay. And then let's say maybe let's try a different. So maybe one of the chromes you want to play with. You can try a different any one of these chrome passes. Right? Then you know there's the gorilla. Whatever you want. Or maybe you start creating your own. It's your it's it's your world. That's got some blue in it. Right? I don't want the blue. So looking through these, this looks great. All right? So I'm gonna render this out. Okay, and there you have it. I'm gonna hit the BPR or Shift R. So I just did Shift R, and I'm gonna click on this, and I'm gonna call this Reflect Two. Okay, and there we go. So we've got a nice base now. Okay, and going out of here and getting into Photoshop. So let's do that. Let's let's load these files into Photoshop and see what we can start playing with and doing with with these. Okay. So <clears throat> let's go over to our Photoshop here. Uh, boop. All right. And what I'm going to do, all right, is I'm going to bring in my images. So now what I like to do is bring in my images a different way. So I'm going to go to the capability in here where you have your, have your automating, you got your Z, you got your scripts and your import. So under scripts, there's load files into stack. Okay, so I'm going to click on this, and it's asking me, okay, what files do you want to load in? I'm going to say browse. I'm going to go to my desktop, and here's my dude. And now I'm going to grab every one that's just a light pass. Okay, so unfortunately, Photoshop right now at this time won't load in the grayscales. So the grayscales are AO, the depth, the mask, the shadows, and SSS. But I can load in the bounce light, the key light, these reflects the rim, these side lights, all of these. I won't be able to load these in it. It doesn't load them. So I say, okay, there they are. Okay. I hit okay. And what it's going to do is Photoshop's going to do the work for me of loading all these in and stacking them for me. Right. And giving the names and keeping the names. Right. So you can see over here to the right now, I've got all my lights are in there. Okay. So now I just need to <clears throat> bring in the other objects. So we need an AO. So I will copy that. And then we will paste that. And I'm going to rename this so we know what it is. Okay, AO. All right, then I'm going to open that. Let's bring in our depth. Okay, if we want to have that. And again, I'm just making all the passes. Because I don't know what I'm going to use, right? So it's best to do more than not enough. Okay, so we'll open that, bring that in. We're definitely going to need a mask layer. So we'll copy that. And we will paste that. And that'll be our mask layer. And then let's bring in the shadows. Okay, so let's copy that. Here, we don't need AO, we don't need depth anymore, we don't need the mask. I'm just going to close some of this stuff up, so keeping it a little bit more clean. So here's our shadows. Whoops, might help if I spell shadows correct. Okay, and then the last one, let's open up our SSS. Okay, so we're going to copy that. And bring this in, not that scene, this scene. And we'll call this our SSS. And there we go. So now we got all of our passes here, right? And I'm just looking in now at lights. Okay, so I probably want to just start only with the key light, right? So I'll have the key light and let's say the side light. And uh, we'll stay away from reflectives right now. We'll stay away from a bounce light. Let's say rim one. Let's not have a top rim and let's start with here. So what we have the capability to doing now is we can start playing with this by a light by light basis. Okay. So I can say, all right, I've got, this is my light. Now let's turn on my side light. And then now it's doing a combination. But because we're in Photoshop, I can say, you know, mm, I don't want that to be so much opacity. So I can start manipulating this and it's, it's me manipulating the image instead of trying to manipulate the light. So then we can start doing a lot of real-time elements here, right? 
And if I want to, I can even add some a color variation to this if I want, right? So in your image and your adjustments, okay, we have your color balance and you have levels and things like this that we can start playing with hue and saturation, right? So I can start playing with this and start saying, I want this light to have a little bit of maybe some red in it, a little bit more of some magenta. And I can start controlling this light to even have a different color to it, but it's real time, right? That's the beauty of this. It's a render pass that I'm mis manipulating in real time. And then I can say rim light, very nice, okay? So maybe let's play with the levels and let's even cap this light a little bit different. Let's go more and more this way, maybe that way. Say okay, let's change a little bit of the color. So again, I was just hitting the shortcut by the way, control L, okay, to bring up my levels. Okay, and then control U will bring up our hue and saturation. I can play with this, maybe, maybe have a little bit of yellow and then now I can say, okay, that light isn't going to be that strong, right? And now on top of this, I can say, you know what? Let's change this to be more of a screen. And then now let's play with the opacity, right? And then now you can see the parts where that yellow is, is really coming through really there. You know, the side light, you know, instead of a normal, let's maybe screen that as well, okay? And now you can see it's really bright. Maybe I liked normal better, right? Or there's multiple things you guys can do here, right? We can do an overlay. Now that's a little crazy. It looks like he got sunburned just like that. You can do a multiply, right? So it's up to us now to start playing with this and just real time messing around with this, right? Maybe that's a little bit more what I want in there. And now we just start continuing adding, okay? So... I want to make this be maybe a blue, right? But you see the whole thing's turning blue. So I want to adjust, again, my hue. Maybe I'll just adjust the hue to be, play with this a little bit. And then have less saturation. You know, start playing with this setting a little bit. Start getting maybe what I want. Say okay. And then maybe, again, play with the levels of this. Say OK. And then let's change this to a screen. And now you've got this blue rim starting to happen, right? And then I can, again, drop the opacity of that. OK, so you can see the benefit here is we're just using ZBrush as a nice render pass. Now we got a side light, another one. Let's also throw that on as a screen. Okay, let's, it's too bright. Just adding a little bit more value to it. I'm going to say that's enough. Okay, then we start getting into Reflex, right? So let's play with Reflect 1 first. We'll turn that on, and now you've got, wee, you know, really reflective, right? So, of course, we can screen this, right? But what I might want to do is in the channels, okay, we might want to, well, we might want to add a mask, right? So in the channels, we'll turn this on and select this, and then we can start now painting out what we don't want to be reflective, right? So we're putting this in the channel setting here, right? So I can start painting out what I don't want, painting in what I don't want, and saying, okay, this portion in this pass, none of this should be reflective, none of this should be reflective, right, because it's cloth, right, so it shouldn't have this crazy reflectivity to it. So this is, in essence, painting a specular pass. So I've rendered out the whole scene specularity-wise, okay, and now I'm picking and choosing based upon masking within Photoshop, right, and I can keep playing with this and doing what I want with this, however, uh, however it may be. Okay, so now we are doing this. And then, of course, we can really start playing with this, right? And say, okay, it's a little it's a little ridiculous, right? Maybe that much reflectivity. And then now maybe I go to a bigger brush and then slowly maybe push back some of it on the belly, make it not so reflective in certain spots. 
Okay, and then now I can throw this one in and do this same process, right? Screen it, again, add a mask, right? And again, we're going in the channels so that we can turn this mask on. I want to paint on this, right? So it should be the selected icon here. Okay, and then now I can paint out. And you're going to see it's red because that's what the masking looks. So if you guys click on this and then click back, you know, you won't see red anymore. You'll just see you unpainting things. Okay, so you can, we got a lot of control here. I am doing multiple specs now, and I'm picking and choosing, in essence, where that specularity is going on this dude. Okay, we got a bounce light. Ooh, scary. So let's definitely set that to a screen. It is way too strong, right? And then maybe even, maybe a multiply, play with that, and even the fill of it, play with that fill a little bit as well. Right, and then if I don't like it, the beauty is I'm not wasting render time. I just turn it off. Eh, I don't like it. Eh, I don't like that reflectivity. Or do I like that reflectivity? Eh, I like it. Okay, now we're going to start getting into other things like RAO. Okay, so we turn that on, and then this is what we get. Nice, looks great. Very cool, very cool AO. So <clears throat> let's play with the levels. Control L is what I'm going to, again, I'm going to image, adjust, okay, and I'm just using the shortcut control L to pull up my levels. I can play with the levels, see, look, how much I can change the ambient occlusion, just even here in Photoshop. So that little gray maybe I was getting in the past, I can even use Zebra, I mean, use Photoshop to get rid of that, right? And not only that, right, I want to play with maybe the hue, and maybe I want this to have some color to it, right? So I can start playing with these hue sliders, or I can start playing with the color itself and maybe put some cyan with some blue in there, right? Because maybe I want the AO to have like a blue tone to it. So it's very nice. Excellent. Hit OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this. I'm going to change the path to multiply. And then now you can see the blues in there. So if we turn the AO off, that's AO off, AO on. AO off, AO on. Right? So now I've got that blue tone in there. And now I can start doing the same things with my shadows. Okay, let's play with those shadows. Let's play with the color baby of this. So we'll adjust the color balance of this maybe, maybe maybe the shadows have a little bit of a red tone to them. I don't know why. A little yellowish red tone to them. Like that. Just so there's a cool and warm contrasting happening there. Then we'll change this to our multiply. And then there. Now we've got shadows. We've got an aim and inclusion. Right? And then of course we can still play with the opacity of all this. Right, and I can say the AO, I don't want 